Botswana is on a quest to establish uh, new partnerships. Um, we're uh, talking specifically this morning about the partnership with Estonia. This we're looking uh, to the 4 h to align with Botswana's uh, new economic transformation plan because Estonia is one of uh, those countries in the world that are most digitally advanced, you know, having made a very notable progress in the digital uh, landscape uh, generally. And then also uh, we're looking at uh, the digitalization of public services that we're uh, seeing from, from Estonia. We're looking at SMEs, uh, amongst others, that are also they're participating in the digital economy. So President Advocate uh, Dumaboko, together with his uh, Estonian uh, counterpart, where, as we got cut off there, uh, live on a press uh, briefing, which is part of the three-day state visit uh, to Estonia, which is an opportunity for Botswana to, to benchmark on Estonia's success in the digital space amongst others. So international relations uh, expert uh, uh, Mr. Fasunoro is here, is joining us uh, this morning here in studio to explore just this opportunity. How Estonia's digital experience could perhaps uh, you know, help Botswana to grow our own digital economy. Let me take this time uh, to, to welcome you. Um, we're, we are having a bit of a uh, challenge with getting the, you know, that pre press conference uh, very clear, but we have an idea what is happening there. So good morning. We're going to talk about that. Thank you so much for having me. Right. Okay. Uh, let's start here. Um, I, I used earlier the term that uh, is often uh, thrown about, that Estonia is seen as uh, the Silicon Valley of Europe. Um, I want you to comment on that, on just how advanced is Estonia for, 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 you know, for the world over to refer to Estonia as the Silicon Valley of Europe. That's a big title. <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, yeah. Estonia has advanced itself in terms of technology and uh, to this point they have made a progress throughout the years since 1996 to date. Uh, and in that I mean um, with the educational system, with e-banking, with e-taxes, uh, they even vote online. Uh, you don't have, they don't have to go to polling stations like we normally do mm. to vote. They, they vote from the comfort of their homes. Mm. And uh, business, to in business uh, infrastructures are also developed where uh, businesses can share invoices. purchase order There's no such. There's business and to government uh, partnerships as well that are interlinked through the internet. Well, and it, it's pretty impressive. I, I want you to talk about perhaps uh, how it is that, I impressive given the year of independence of, of, uh, of Estonia. So it's been a sovereign state for only just uh, sin, since um, somewhere in the 90s, you, you touch on that. When we look back at uh, the, the growth of uh, sovereign state uh, Estonia and then to be at this level of advancement, especially on digital uh, uh, technologies. Okay, Estonia. Wow. <laughs> it's yeah. got its in independence in 1991. Yeah. And in 1996, they had what they call the Leapfrog a program. This program was intended for schools, uh, basically, for to integrate schools into the modern technology, uh, the communication technology, and also uh, making sure that oh, not only learners uh, adapt to the, to the new technology, but uh -huh. teachers as well are trained to support students in this new form of uh, digitalization that they had. Uh, as, as an aspiration for, for that country. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's in terms of uh, the, the historical factors that allowed uh, for Estonia in this short space of time to be there today. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want to go back to just uh, how how far then, because I mean, taken from, from uh, 1991, uh, surely there had been uh, citizens that are functioning in the economy, functioning uh, in the nation uh, generally, that ha were not at that uh, level to start off with the education uh, system on uh, the, this uh, digital uh, transformation. How then, because I'm also thinking of how, 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 what lessons Botswana can learn from, from that, because um, to aspire to the level of advancement that Estonia is at, mm -hmm. and perhaps there's lessons that, that we can learn, but when implementing it back home, on a level order that are <laughs> not going to be starting with the education system from scratch if we're to uh, perhaps um, the, uh, uh, borrow from, from that. But how is it that then they manage to get inclusivity for every citizen, even at that uh, stage of uh, starting, at that uh, uh, late start? 
of the 90s. Okay. Uh, to start with, uh, I think it's important to understand that technology or innovation does not exist in silos. It does not exist in, in, a, in a vacuum, uh, but rather it, it is borrowed, it is um, reshaped and reimagined. Yeah. So in that instance, they made sure that uh, the innovation or digitalization development is more about development-driven uh, strategies rather than strategy-driven development. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so the priority is in development. That's interesting. Please say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the innovation is characterized by um, development-driven strategies rather than uh, strategy-driven development. Okay. So in that way, they will be able to maneuver through the new technologies and also making sure that there's consistent learning of new um, I would say population uh, as they progress, and also the teachers, but the old, the old, older generation mm. are also taught about the new modern uh, technologies. Mm. That's how they were able to incorporate everyone and take everyone to to the next levels as they progressed. Okay, um, I, I want I want to maybe take that and relate it to, to Botswana in, in terms of uh, what what are the chances as you uh, uh, look at it for for Botswana or how fast are these chances uh, realistically looking uh, for Botswana? Uh, because Botswana, to the large extent, we're still a population that remains with a bit of te technophobia. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you still have people that are asking you to help them get ATM. <laughs> 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 you know? And then integrating su su such uh, development. What, what, what do you see? How do you foresee that? Purpose? I think uh, for every organizational change, mm -hmm. there's that bit of resistance or fear. I mean, from organizational level to international level or national level, that also exists. Yeah. So I think as Botswana, we can try to tap into the value of what uh, the Estonian, Estonians have already done and try to implement it into our in our country. And I'm talking about models. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of education, they have a free education system where children can learn everything in the internet at the tip of the finger and with in schools they have what I would call smart board for as an example you know we moved from writing on the chalkboard to yeah. to now whiteboard I think we're still at whiteboard level right. but whenever they've integrated to a smart board that you can interact with they, that we can interact with yeah. and also the the e e notes where the teacher can send notes to the students via uh, internet so uh, and there's also access to internet within schools and this happened from uh, I think it was 400 500 schools to now every school in the within the country having access to, it, to yeah. the internet so I think Botswana can leverage that uh, strength from from <laughs> Estonia into uh, our landscape here yeah and, and we're not comparing to a very far apart um, um, examples in, in, in terms of uh, countries it, in that the population of Estonia is just over a million also yeah. <laughs> you know as, as uh, com compared to what and I want to talk about that but the fact is Estonia is also being uh, appraised for a very successful public education system. And for Botswana, most of us in, in Botswana are products of the, the, this public education system. That's why we're diamond baby, <laughs> babies. Yeah. So uh, the, the success of the public education system is something that would be important uh, to, to Botswana. Let's talk about lessons perhaps from Estonia there. Um, from Botswana, I think at one point I visited uh, Enko University. Uh, primary school or senior secondary school yeah. in block seven and I realized that they have some sort of developments and with what Botswana is currently doing, the, building this uh, bilateral relations with Estonia, I believe we can be able to tap into what they have already, already implemented. Mm -hmm. Like I've mentioned, the, the, the di uh, implementing digitalization, communication technologies into the system, and also uh, capacitating teachers as yeah. well. And also having um, educational technologists, people who, who are focused on technology and education at the same time, mm -hmm. who, who can work with policymakers to make sure that uh, education is taken to the next level. I think in, in that way, we can be able to, as a first, a first step, we can be yeah. able to change how we do things here. Okay, and but when we talk about uh, you know existing in the, or navigating the, the, the digital technology or existing in the digital uh, space, uh, we also look at uh, what um, 
what do we have to support that? I'm talking about uh, in infrastructure development. I know that Botswana is making advancements towards uh, connectivity, the hotel, the clinic, and so on and so forth. But let's talk about just that. I mean, to function to that extent and, and that uh, level of advancement uh, as a digital economy, then something needs to back it up. Yes. <laughs> we should be able uh, to support it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, already we have the national transformation strategy, yeah. but uh, the difference with uh, with Estonia is that with them it's not housed within one institution or uh, an office bearer, bearer. but um, with us we already have that uh, system in place. What needs to be done is to somehow uh, implement it. And secondly, um, in Estonia they prioritize uh, digitalization uh, as an they prioritize digitalization in, in a way that they also integrate it to the, the, the relationship between the government and the public sector. Mm. So there's that correlation. What you already have here in Botswana, we have companies that are, are technologically, uh, um, I would say, focused. Right. So and advanced. They can, yeah, and advanced. They yeah. can work with the government, you know, and also assist in... in taking this uh, forth. What does that say to, to policy? Because yes, work of government is one thing. Uh, we can you know, borrow a leaf from the public-private uh, partnership uh, that has been uh, an ideal model with a lot of policy and red tape that still needs to be sorted out even today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but again, the, we have to start somewhere. And yeah. I believe with the, the kind of um, advancement that we already have, we must utilize it other than like, getting everything from elsewhere, mm. because that uh, at the same time is costly. And at the same time, in Botswana, we always say we want to diversify our economy because diamonds are not sufficient enough to, mm. and there's going to be retrenchment within the diamond uh, sector. Mm. So I think this also gives an opportunity for Botswana to diversify its economy mm. and tap into the, the untapped yeah. or the non-mineral economies. What else can we learn from Estonia still on that one, uh, on, on easing red tape and, and policy that often hinders progress or slows down uh, progress, especially when we're talking about the, now the participation or uh, the hopeful uh, participation of private sector in areas that uh, could uh, support government's effort. Yeah, so yeah. what Estonia did is they tapped into uh, what Ukraine has. Ukraine is operating from a, 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 a smartphone. The state is operating from a smartphone. They have what? an app, app that is called DIA, or D-I-A, okay. where they have business-to-business -business interactions, where you can upload your CV, you can upload your ID, your passports, and everything else that you'd want to store in, in that app. Yeah. You, can, you can have it in there. So in Estonia, they have an app called M M. Emric app as well, where they can operate everything from divorces, marriages, within like the whole the, economy. everything within that app. So I wow. believe with that, um, if we can, we can be able to integrate it, and it could be something that say long we could leverage uh, long term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, which areas perhaps if you, I don't know if this is your area, as you are international relations, <laughs> but then, you know, when you, look, when you look at our economy, which areas specifically or urgently or priority would uh, perhaps uh, you comment or perhaps you see as us um, needing, uh, you know, to embrace or engage uh, digitalization or digital technologies as a, as a priority that when you look at are having a significant um, hindrance on, on the, prog the, the progress of the economy or the growth of the economy, really? I think I would say uh, with, with Estonia, uh, the apps that they have, they have X, X Road, which uh, is a one stop shop and it has ah. stopped uh, the bureaucracies. And one stop shop was supposed to happen more, <laughs> Zona. <laughs> the bureaucracies <laughs> yes. and also it has afforded them the, the, the accountability and transparency yeah. as a nation. So I believe. With us here, we can also tap into that. And also, your question was, uh, what is it that is slowing mm. the progress? I think when a public but service, say, public service, how can I go put the system down? With us having that app in place, economy could excel. We could integrate into the world economy through uh, using that kind of technology. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad when you mentioned that because I was going to go. Then uh, we're looking at this. Um, working the visit as an opportunity perhaps uh, to, to, to benchmark and also perhaps to borrow 
uh, fr from Estonia. And overall, generally when we're looking at uh, Botswana as an international uh, player, as a, as a global player, how does advancement in digital uh, technologies uh, then um, w you know, support that? Or how important is it when we're looking at uh, foreign police? <laughs> and, uh -huh. You know, our advancement in technologies, how does it affect that? Because we're, look, when we're look, talking about economic diversification, there's going to have to be ease of doing business with us. Yes. Yeah. So, um, to start with, the foreign policy, Estonian foreign policy is aligned with the digital uh, transformation, yeah. of which is the core of what they're able to do or what they're able to give to the world. Yeah. And again, what they've done is that um, with every country, it's more like uh, they have tailor made the foreign policy towards each country. For example, with Namibia, they're more focused in uh, E e-government and entrepreneurship, e-entrepreneurship. E and in Botswana, it's e-solutions. That is giving us solutions to tap into areas uh, that so we are not able to maneuver very well, but to, for us to have ease in, the, in mm. those areas. And also uh, the data-driven uh, technologies. Mm. And previously, they had visited Botswana um, in April, where there was a seminar. And uh, yeah. the, 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 the um, Estonians? No, 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 not the Estonians, but the, the private sector, the, ah. the public sector, and uh, the government were also part of this uh, seminar where they also shared ideas and also reflected on what is happening on, on the ground to inform policies going forward. Yeah, well, yes. that sounds like tangible progress from the, uh, the first visit the, the, by Estonia present here. So th did this happen after that, the, the, this uh, seminar that you're talking about? Yeah, this sem seminar happened last month in April ah. on, the, on April 23rd, okay. where the Estonians came to Botswana and they gave out um, a, a more like a crash course on uh, data different uh, technology and how Botswana can tap into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And sometimes to take advantage of um, whatever is available for citizenry is um, knowledge and information and the free flow of knowledge and information and that's one area that we uh, learn Estonia is uh, doing pretty well uh, Estonia came second in the press freedom index mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so, so let's let's speak about that it's sometimes even biblically my people perish because of a lack of knowledge <laughs> and sometimes we are not taking advantage of uh, uh, what is out there because of lack of knowledge and only the press can take us there for one Yes, yeah. what the Estonian, what they've done is they have, they have a constitutional law that supports freedom of speech. It's there, it's, it's enshrined within their constitution that uh, journalists are free to write and do as they please. And yeah. uh, with that, um, they also have, they don't have a fake news uh, policy like in Hungary and um, Poland where if you write false news, you can be taken to jail. Mm. They don't have su such a thing. And also, there's no censorship. The, gov the, the, the media can write uh, whatever they, they, wa they deem right or what they please. Um, in that, the, again, another instance is that uh, the government is, support, is in support of uh, media houses through funding. So I think this, uh, to some extent, is, is, yeah. is questioning the media. Man, and especially also that funding yeah. one. And, uh, and unfortunately, this is all the time that uh, we have. And uh, well, this uh, day has two more. This visit has two more days. Perhaps we'll catch up and uh, the, you know pick up from what has actually transpired with this conversation. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have this morning. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Deborah. All right, uh, we're, we're talking there to um, international relations uh, expert. Uh, a political uh, expert at the Fasunola is sharing with us here, uh, with us, uh, you know, just uh, what uh, perhaps uh, we can look forward to around uh, the fact that uh, uh, the President Advocate Dumaboko is in Estonia engaging on, on a working visit there. Estonia is one of those uh, countries in the world that are seen as uh, most digitally advanced. We're talking about their levels of press freedom, we're talking about their successes in public education, we're specifically talking about what it is that uh, Botswana can leverage from this bilateral. Relations. 